Now, I begin to round up by saying this to you. If you look at these scriptures that I've mentioned, Genesis 8.1, the book of 1 Samuel, you know, you know, 1 verse 19. If you begin to look at all these scriptures that I've mentioned, you will realize that there are three components. There should be seven, but I will just mention three that are common among all of them. Number one, you will realize that every one of them carried a consciousness. Every one of them carried a consciousness. Every time you say, God, remember me. For example, the woman that came to the altar, our mother of faith, Hannah, that came to the altar to pray, she never prayed aimlessly. There was a consciousness of what she needed God to remember her for. There was a consciousness of what she needed God to remember her for. She was very, very intentional. She was not beating around the bush. She was not looking and spectating when other people were praying. When God spoke to Noah, he never decided to consult people to carry out that which God has actually spoke to him. He just had the consciousness of the word of God and he ran with it. And he ran with it. That is number one, consciousness. Number two is contention by prayer. Contention by prayer contention by prayer i will stop at number three because of our time contention by prayer contention by prayer contention by prayer every man that prayed that god should remember them they prayed and they were not just conscious about it they made the right prayer aligned for god to remember them if you read the book of genesis 30 verse 22 you will realize that the Bible says, and God opened the womb of Rachel because he hearkened unto our prayer. He hearkened unto our prayer. He hearkened unto our prayer. When you read the book of Genesis 19 verse 29, the Bible said, and God remembered that particular, you know, covenant that he had with Abraham and he decided to save to save Lot. So Lot was not saved because of himself. Lot was saved because Abraham interceded for Lot. So when it was time to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, what God saw in Lot for God to deliver Lot was the contention by prayer that Abraham had. Please don't forget, as the visitors arrived, there was a consciousness that led to the contention. And hear me, this is the final one for tonight. The third thing that you need on your own part to be remembered. Please, because you see, there is the part of the mercy of God, but there is your own part. The third thing that you need is to cut covenant with God. Somebody say 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 covenant with God. The scriptures I have read for us, Genesis 9. 15 and 16 there was a covenant in the book of first samuel there was a covenant yes or no come on yes or no the woman said our mother of faith hannah said if you give me this child i am going to give it back to you was that not a covenant yes or no was that not a covenant yes or no in short it will interest you when you are reading the praise prophetic word of Zechariah in the book of Luke 1 I think from verse 79 or 78 there about he said thank you for remembering your holy covenant thank you for remembering your holy covenant Exodus 2 verse 24 as I read to us what God remembered was the covenant he had with what Abraham Isaac and who and Jacob so if you want to be remembered, you need to come into a consciousness. Consciousness of number one. What you want God to remember you for. Number two, you need to come into the consciousness of the God that you are dealing with. Some of you, you have allowed casual seasons and times in the presence of God rob you of your attention from God. Please, I want you to look at me as we begin to close now. Look at me as we begin to close. When you appear before God and you appear casually, 
you go back home the way you came. But when you appear before God and you appear intentionally with a consciousness, oh my God. How many of you have read the book of John where the Bible said, while men slept, the enemy came and did what? And so tears. That means, please hear me, that means the enemy is waiting. Look at me, everybody. The enemy is waiting for you to be unconscious before he begins to do what he wants to do. Those seasons when you decide to be prayerless, what you have decided to do is to be unconscious. Write it down to be prayerless is to be spiritually unconscious. My God, to be prayerful is to be spiritually sensitive. Can I repeat that again? To be prayerless is to be spiritually unconscious, but to be prayerful is to be spiritually what sensitive. Sensitive. The quality of your sensitivity is determined by how much prayer you throw into your territory. The quality of your sensitivity is determined by how much prayer you throw into the atmosphere. There are some things that cannot pass around. Oh, sometimes ago I was watching a video where a witch was talking about how she attacks home and attacks children. That their major mission is to attack children. And what she said was that the moment they come around the house, the first thing they gauge is to gauge the prayerlessness of that particular home to see how they can be able to gather to come in. He said, but when they notice that the house is having some level of fire around, it's a sign to them that this father, this mother, is a man and a woman of what? Prayer. Consciousness. Intentional consciousness. Intentional consciousness. Intentional consciousness. Consciousness of what you are looking for. The second consciousness is this. You need consciousness of who you want to receive that thing you are looking for from. Hmm. Hey. The consciousness of the person you are meeting to collect what you are looking for from. Many a times you don't know the God that you are looking for, for that thing from. And that is why when they tell you to pray, you are lackadastica. You know, some of you, there is, there is this viscosity and seriousness. When you go to the house of an imam, Babala or Dibia, than when you come to the presence of God. That is why you realize that that concentration and that intentionality that you ought to put in the house of God, you are not putting it. Please, I want to ask a question. I don't know if someone can give me an answer. Have you ever seen someone that go to a Dibia house and is sleeping there? And while the Dibia is talking, he's sleeping. He's sleeping. It's because you don't know your God. It's because, look at me, look at me. If they tell the man to come and do all night, eh? The fear and the dread of the of the territory, eh? We make we make that even though if that person has not slept for twenty days, that sleep we elope. I don't know if you are getting me now. That sleep we run away. Why? Because there is a consciousness of the presence in the territory. But we come to the presence of God. You want to be hyped. You want to be this. You want to be that. And at the end of the day, those things ends in a pedestal where what is in your heart continues to become what is in your heart and nothing changes, nothing happens to you. But hear me, child of God, when you enter into the consciousness of who you are coming to meet, eh, there is every tendency, child of God, that what you are about to receive can never be the normal you used to receive before. The third consciousness is who you are in Christ Jesus. Who you are in Christ Jesus. That you are the son of light. He's your father. Because sometimes 
if you know who God is and you don't know who you are to God, it might also restrain and constrain what you want to receive. You know, some of you still think that you are a slave before God. No. Slave is your disposition. Sonship is your position. I don't know if you are getting me now. Slave is for your service. I don't know if you are getting me now. I am a born servant of God by service. But by my position, please hear me now. By my position, I am a what? Oh, oh you are not sounding it. You see, you see, you see what we're talking about? You are not, I am a what? <laughs> for the ladies, who, what are you? For our mommies, what are you? So when you don't, when you don't come with this kind of confidence, this conscious confidence of who you are to the one that you are trying to receive what you want from him, you realize that there's a breakage. Then the second one is what? Is contention by prayer. Then finally, you begin to do what? You cut covenant. You cut covenant. You cut covenant. You cut covenant with your life. The Lord, if you give me this money, I'm going to put it back into the kingdom. Mm. If you remember, <laughs> this I'm about to show you, you'll be blessed by it. If you remember, the reason God had to decide to show Abraham, please look at me. The reason why God had to show Abraham what he wanted to do in Sodom and Gomorrah was because God knew that Abraham will teach his children children the ways of God. Yes or no? Come on, do you remember the book of Genesis? Do you remember Genesis 18? Do you remember? He said, I know Abraham. He's going to teach. So there was all, look at me. <laughs> it is from that scripture I got to realize that there are, please look at me. There are times you will say some things. God knows that you don't mean it. But there are things you do not say. God knows that your action already mean it. God has, God has checked you know, the consistent work that he had had with Abraham. And he understand that by this work, this man, even without saying it, he's going to commit his children to me. So, because there's a covenant that exists in his heart, I cannot pass him to go and destroy Sodom. I cannot pass Abraham to go and... So, every time you say, God, remember me, does it come from a consciousness of what you want, who God is, and who you are? Number two, are you truly contending for what you want? Then number three, do you have a covenant on ground? Do you have a covenant on ground? Do you have a covenant on ground? Look at me. Eh? God believes in you so much. Hear me now. God believes in you so much. That is why he has allowed you to live today. Yes or no? Ah. Hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Some of you do not understand. The first person that hope for you before you even hope for today was God <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you are not here mm. you are not here God put his hope and his faith and his belief in you that this your life will be better than what it is yesterday that is why he gave you air to breathe Is everybody here? Is everybody catching it? Now, look at me, everybody. Look at me, everybody. Kai. Somebody will jump up now. Somebody will jump up now. Somebody will jump up now. As I release this. As I release this. If God is hopeful of me, who am I to be hopeless? If the one, look at me. If the one that controls the universe still has hope in me, who am I to be hopeless? Who am I to be hopeless? Who am I to be hopeless? Who am I to be? Can I ask you a question? The greatest quotient, the greatest thing that matters is who is God? Is who? Oh, is who? 
if God is hopeful in me and he gave me, oh, come on, you can't be sitting down again. You can't be sitting down. You can't be sitting down. That is the consciousness we are talking about. You can't be seated down. If God is hopeful in me, I cannot be hopeless. If God is hopeful in me, because if God, look at me, child of God. Look at me. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Look at me. One of the signs, look at me. One of the signs that this particular speaker is no longer needed again is that you pack it up and you throw it into the store yes or no now every point and every place where it ought to exhibit and show forth its usage what did you do you take it away from there pack it up and at times you even you know grind it and pieces it yes or no now that's a sign of death for this speaker yes or no that's a sign of death for this speaker yes or no but anytime you still take this speaker to the repair house is a sign that you still want to use this speaker it's a sign that this speaker is still useful still alive and hear me child of god you are not even dead you are still breathing if we can be able to repair something that is inanimate how much more you god has given you life and hear me because he has given you life he believes that your tomorrow is going to be better than your yesterday divine remembrance come with the cost of consciousness come with the cost of what contention by prayer and come with the cost of what covenants divine remembrance in the part of God there is mercy where he decides to say I'm turning my attention but there is the consciousness extra 6 verse 1 there was a consciousness of who Haman was consistently from when he was a slave down as he entered the kingdom of Zazis he had a consciousness that he is a son of Zion he is not like this ones so when God looked at him and said because you kept your cool and you kept your consciousness I am going to make sure that the king do not sleep tonight and can I shock you sir God can <laughs> oh Bradish Kabatita Baish sir the degree at which men remember you is the degree at which God remembers you. Can I say that again to you? The degree at which men remembers you is the degree at which God remembers you. When God do not say that it's not your time, everything that man does for you, it goes down the drain. But when God says it's your time and it's your season, let the whole world gang up together, you will still rise. It's your time to be remembered. 